I'm after the pearl of a great price, the price of pearl, and I've learned it's out in the deep. That is where our treasure is, so we must leave the safety of the shores. Mickey and Minnie here always reminded me that it's been a, a dark, dark world of festering fears and tears that only perfect love can cast away. And it's a small world, after all, of decreasing hope. And it's time for the greatest hope of all to spring forth by love alone. And it's time to put on our love hat and to let down our pride. This is uh, to be part of the pride of the Lion of Zion. I let down my hair that I grew as a wig. It's Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. So I've come to tell you guys a little bit about me. So you know who is this crazy old guy dressed up like a like a, a Halloween king here. And uh, the magic, different colors, but kind of magic. Uh, who am I? When I was a uh, little kid, uh, I'd go to church every week. I'd get heck, because I was a kid in the front row lighting matches. By the time I hit 15, 16, I became rebellious. There was a lot of turmoil in my house. Next thing I knew, I was having pot parties in the basement of a Baptist church uh, with a half dozen other kids. I had the keys. My dad was the janitor. And I did that for uh, months and months. I'd skip out of school and go to church and party in church. Um, I, I went to a Billy Graham crusade and later um, one from David Wilkerson um, in uh, Pontiac, Michigan when I was like uh, uh, 12, 13 years old. Uh, first time I smoked weed was in uh, <laughs> in uh, that revival meeting. I remember seeing hundreds of kids crying and throwing their drugs, knives, guns, bouncing on the stage in front of the man who um, was behind Cross on the Switchblade uh, movie portraying David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz. And by the way, the, the book that I will always raise up is Run Baby Run by Nikki Cruz. Read it, please. Changed my life in a, a revolutionary way. But um, I, I, I hit the skid marks and um, you know, by the time I was uh, 16, I started partying pretty hard and uh, drinking and uh, drugs became a common thing. I should have died from a, a drug overdose. At one point I had a bag of glue on my face and I passed out my sister Carol, who's now in glory. She saved my life. And I, I've been fully alcoholic my whole life. And the word of God was un being revealed to me along the way because of open-eyed visions and dreams that he gave me, because I heard his audible voice, because the Lord uh, had me writing by a light that was never plugged in for seven, eight minutes. It was a Gideon fleece um, miracle that was clearly a miracle. The plug was never plugged in to the lamp, and I wrote seven, eight minutes to a pastor who said, Daniel, this is you in Isaiah 49. Uh, that you are the messenger of, of the Lord. And I tried running away from my calling all many, many years, but I had ups and downs all around. Um, the biggest uh, preparation the Lord has had on me was I had a vision of my, my wife before I married her, and I saw her disappearing in my, my, my dream. And uh, that happened in real life because uh, issues with her mind and paranoia, um, she seemingly pushed me away. And But we've been back seeing each other and life is pretty good. There's, there's uh, still problems that we all need to work out. But I have the willingness to work out problems. Um, and that is insane for most people because I'm facing constant adversity with negativity from her, and it's because of imaginations. She is on uh, pills for uh, issues, but uh, the, the biggest issue that she and I have is that we do love each other. I know I love her, she knows that she loves me, and I, I witnessed the same thing. 
in my parents' marriage. My, my parents, uh, they were married uh, for like 50 years, almost, uh, but uh, they were divorced many of those years. But you know what? Once you truly love someone, you always love someone. If I never saw my, my ex-wife or the wife or girlfriend, I'm not sure what she even wants to be, um, if I never saw her again, I would always love her. I would always love my first wife. This was my second that I'm speaking of, Linda. Linda uh, Ann Tolbert Owsley, and uh, sweet, sweet soul. And, you know, God wants us to have Hosea kind of faith where we will even go back and love someone who's not worthy of being loved. His, his wife, uh, Gomer, uh, Hosea, went back to being a lady of the night, broke the marriage uh, vows, and he took her back. And I've always had that kind of a forgiving heart. You have to have, because I have had the hardest road uh, to go, because I learned early on that I placed my ministry above my marriage, and my marriage started falling apart because what happened, I, I caused my, my wife to feel lonely and abandoned within her own, within our own marriage. And then she started inventing lovers. The next thing I knew, I was married and I belonged to someone else. And now she pushed me out the door. But along the way, for 10 years, uh, I, 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 she had accused me of killing my parents and my sisters and uh, uh, drugging her and... Uh, uh, um, schizophrenia, a delusionary that I was smothering her and drown, trying to drown her. I found her in a bathtub one time. And uh, But the, the, the truth is perfect love casts out all fear of being with someone that has gone through issues like that. I'm medicated. And I have always forgiven her along the way because I, she's of no fault. All of her imaginations are just that. So we need to transcend and quit um, condemning one another. I condemn her for nothing. And it, unless you arrive at that kind of love where you want to be with someone like that who is in the natural, your enemy, <laughs> that's loving your enemy. <laughs> and I've learned that lesson through my wife. Thank you, Linda. If you ever um, hear this... Uh, message, my, my beloved, you are the wife of my youth. <laughs>